Hey guys, welcome back to Jubertech channel. In our last video, we dove deep into creating an ugly but powerful search bar in Flutter. If you've given that a try, you know how seamless it can feel to the user. But let's talk about what's happening behind the scenes. When we are fetching data directly from Firestore for our search, it might seem okay initially. However, as our dataset grows, and our search queries become more complex, this method can quickly become inefficient. Not to mention, it could incur additional cost that feels like your wallet got snatched by your master wife. That's why Firebase themselves recommend outsourcing search capabilities to specialized platforms when the going gets tough. So in today's video, we've decided to integrate Algolia into our app a search API that is well lubricated to fit with Firestore data. So without further ado, let's dive right in. The first thing we need to do is to go to Algolia website. If you're new to Algolia, then you'll need to sign up for an account. And after creating an account, this is the dashboard that you'll see. And to get started with Algolia, we need to create an application by clicking on this button and then tapping on this create application. But before we move forward, I just want to clarify things first. In Algolia, when they say application, it essentially refers to an environment where you can store multiple data sets, or what they call indices. Think of an application like a project space where you can have various searchable collections each with its own configurations and rules. And speaking of index in Algolia, an index is similar to a database table or a Firestore collection. It's a structure that holds all the records you want to make searchable. Each record in an index typically represents a piece of content or an object that users might search for. So in your app, if you have search feature for users and search feature for products, you'd need to create two indices inside your Algolia application. One for the user's collection and another for the product's collection. If you have two or more Firebase projects, each with its search feature, you can house all the indices inside a single Algolia application. But for the sake of organization, I recommend creating one Algolia application for each Firebase project. Okay, now that we have a good understanding of what an application and an index mean in Algolia, let's continue creating our application. So here, we need to name our application. Since our application is a chat app, let's name it Flutter Chat App. It says here that this name is optional, but I still recommend naming it for easier identification in the future. Then down here, you need to choose the subscription you need. In our case, let's choose this free tier. When you are just starting out, I recommend starting with this free tier. And then let's click on this next step. Then here, you need to choose your data center where you want your data stored. I recommend choosing the data center nearest to your area to reduce latency. And then scroll down and click on this review application details button. Now here we can see the summary of our subscription we choose. It says that we can store up to 1 million records and then 10,000 search requests per month. So let's accept these terms and conditions and click on this create application. There you go, we now have successfully created our application. Once you've done creating your application, we now need to create our index as explained earlier about indices. Since we are creating an index for our users collection, let's name our index users index. And then click on create index. Now 
Okay, after creating an index, let's go to our Firebase project and install the Algolia extension. Go to All Product, click on these extensions. Then look for Algolia and install it. Now here, it says your project must be on the Blaze plan. So let's upgrade our project to the Blaze of Glory plan to satisfy Firebase. Never mind this, these are just an explanation why these are needed by the extension. You can read it on your own. So let's enable all of this. Now here is the configuration. This collection path is the path to your searchable collection. So in our case, it's the user's collection. Then here is the indexable field. This is optional because you can set this in your Algolia dashboard. But in our case, let's make our user's name searchable. Take note that you shouldn't be adding sensitive fields here like UID, email, and phone number. In this first data sync, I recommend setting it to no because Algolia will automatically sync it every time there is a change. So there is no need to resync it to avoid additional read costs. So here in the Algolia index name is the index we have just created, which is the user's index. And this Algolia application ID, you can find this on your Algolia settings. And API case. Let's copy this. Next is your Algolia API key. Take note that it says here that you shouldn't be using your admin API key and we need to create a new API key with these permissions. So let's create a new API key. Here in your description, you can write whatever you want. Let's choose our index here. And here, Let's add all the recommended permissions. After adding them all, let's hit create. This is now our newly created API key. Let's copy it. And then it says here that we need to create a secret. Then let's skip this. And here let's choose yes. And then choose your cloud function location. And then install extension. Okay, the extension is now installing. Let's wait for this to complete. Okay, installation is now done. Now it says here that when user's collection exists, 
it should begin importing documents into the user's index. So let's go ahead and see if our collection was imported. Oh, we still don't have any records yet. Why is that? Ah, it says here that this extension listens to our collection users if we create, update, or delete, and will index it. So let's try to add user to our collection. Okay, let's try to check one more time if the collection was imported. Oh, we now have 16 records. There you go. All our users are now imported. We can now start using this in our Flutter app. Okay, we are now here at our Flutter project. We'll implement this in a straightforward way to avoid complexities. Our goal here is to simply make it work in the easiest way possible, so that once we type the name of the users we are interested in, it will be displayed on our UI like magic. So we have here a basic screen with the text form field as an up bar and without a body so that it would be easier for you to follow along. And let's build this up along the way. Okay, the first thing we need is a client side API that will communicate to our Algolia index. So in this demonstration, we'll use the Algolia 1.1.2 package. So here is the Algolia package that we'll be using. Here in their example, we need to initialize this Algolia class using this init method, passing in both the application ID and our API key. We already covered where to find this earlier, so this shouldn't be a problem. And then after initializing, we need to instantiate it like this. And to start fetching search results, we need to tap on this instance.index, passing our Algolia index name, followed by this query method, passing in the search query. And then you can filter the query here if you want, using this facet filters or any other filtering method that matches your needs. But in our case, we won't be filtering for simplicity. And then we need to fetch it using this getObjects method and await its result. Take note that this snap or the result of this getObject method is not yet the list of users that we are trying to fetch. This is an object that contains the details of the operation, including the list of actual results. So to get the final result, we need to tap on the hits field. Alright, I hope the clarity is crystal clear and the flow is flawless. Let's now implement this in our app. As explained, we need to initialize it. And let's define our application ID and API key. Now let's define our fetch users function. Let's pass our index name.
and then the value of our text form field which is this one then let's call the get objects don't forget to await this because this is a future then let's extract the list of users from this snapshot and finally let's add the results to our results list and call set state to rebuild our ui now to be able to fire this function we need to add a search button here Okay, once we trigger this function, we need to display the results to lsview.builder in the body of our scaffold. Okay, what we need to extract here is the name of the users. Since this item is of type Algolia object snapshot, we need to access its data which is of type map string dynamic. And then retrieve the name field. And if it's null, let's give it a default value of no name. Alright, before we test this, let me just wrap this in a try catch real quick. Okay, moment of truth. Let's try to search for this one. Okay. To be able to retrieve the ID of this data, which is this one, we need to tap on the object ID. like this okay that's all for now guys what we only did here is to demonstrate how to fetch from our algolia backend and display its result in the most basic way so in our next video we'll be refining our code to make it robust testable and production ready thank you so much for tuning in guys if this video helped you out Please give it a big thumbs up, share it with your fellow Flutter enthusiasts, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button because this would encourage me to create more valuable content like this.